<laughs> Welcome everyone this afternoon. Uh, I'm Mary Magdalene. I'm going to be interviewing Jesus. Uh, it's a continuation of an, an interview that he started with Luli Faber mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago about how the human soul operates. And today I'd just like to ask you about, I suppose it's the seventh principle uh, pertaining to how the human soul operates called suppression. Yes. So would you be able to explain to us the principle of suppression, suppression. Yep. as regards to the soul? So this is, this is a very important principle when it comes to the soul because, and it's this principle that I feel that most people on the planet do not understand about their own soul and how their own emotions work. And that is that if you attempt to suppress one emotion inside of the soul, then all emotions will be suppressed to a certain degree inside of the soul at the same time. In other words, it's impossible to have a suppression of one emotion and not expect that the rest of the soul can operate uh, with free expression. Mm -hmm. And I think I've, I'd just probably like to read the, my description of it sure. and then we can discuss it in a bit more detail. I've said that suppression is the principle that a person using their will to suppress any one emotion within the soul will also suppress the entire soul and be therefore unable to experience all emotions to the full extent, whether the emotion being suppressed is painful or pleasurable and whether the emotion desired is pleasurable. Mm. So I've been quite specific there with that definition because it's very important that people understand that they can even attempt to suppress pleasure mm -hmm. and that will also have an, uh, an effect of suppressing other parts of their soul as well. It just, it, the soul, it's impossible to suppress one single emotion inside of the soul without it having an effect on the other parts of the soul. And I constantly find people believing otherwise. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and the reality is that if you want to progress towards God, Attempting suppression of any emotion inside of the soul is very counterproductive towards your progression mm. uh, in, in terms of any soul progression that you might make. I, I feel a lot of people believe they can do it and, uh, and also dearly desire to do it. And as a result of that, they often have a degree of success of suppressing an emotion without understanding the effects it's having on the rest of their soul. Yeah, so if we can maybe talk about that. So talk about a few examples. Some examples mm. and, and also what you mean by people believe that they can do it. And now, they might not have a conscious belief that they can do it, but no. their behaviour Their behaviour is such that they believe they can do it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's a very common belief on the planet. Yeah. Like you, you look at, in, a, in almost everybody's day-to-day -day life, they are suppressing certain feelings. You can see it written all over their body, their face, everything, how much they are in suppression of certain emotions. And they believe they can still have other emotions that they feel are good to the full extent, and they can't. Mm. That's mm. the sad thing, is that you can never experience any positive emotion to the full extent while you're suppressing negative emotions. Mm -hmm. It's just impossible. So let's talk about some examples. Mm -hmm. Do you have some examples that would demonstrate this principle? Um, none that come to mind readily at okay. the moment. <laughs> uh, what if I, I can think of sure, a couple of sure. things? Um, and I have a few clarifying questions I'd like to ask as we sure. go along. But sure. um, say I'm, I'm, I'm really afraid of a lot of things in my life. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm afraid of uh, being humiliated. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid of making mistakes. I'm afraid of um, disappointment. I'm afraid of trying really hard for something and then, you know... Feeling disappointed feeling that you never that got there at the end. Or, yes, mm -hmm. yeah. So, so let's say that's me and I've got all those emotions. Mm -hmm. And as I'm going through my life, certain things happen in my work life, say, and these emotions begin to be triggered. Mm -hmm. From what you're saying, if I then suppress those emotions, mm -hmm. I'm basically... Which you're already doing before they are triggered anyway. Yes. Because they just... would never be triggered. With the, the law of attraction would never operate in such a way that emotions that you didn't have would be triggered. <laughs> so so the, re, the way the law of attraction works is that it's a perfect law of God and it works in such a manner that the actual feelings that you have within yourself cause the attraction. Mm -hmm. So... so 
it's, it's not the actual future things that happen as a result of the trigger. The trigger is the result of the soul already being in the state of suppression. Okay, so mm -hmm. so given that, mm -hmm. then we know that I'm already suppressing those fears Pushing in my day-to-day -day in your day-to-day -day life. life, yep. So what does that mean for the rest of my soul? Well, firstly, every aspect of your life that is under the control of those particular areas that you're suppressing will also be affected by your suppression. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if you're afraid of humiliation this will cause you to no longer act freely, in, yeah. particularly in public or in company. Mm -hmm. So this, uh, this is a subsequent result of the suppression of that humiliation emotion. Mm -hmm. While you're suppressing the emotion of being humiliated, you're also now taking and making decisions and choices that cause you to avoid areas where you might finish up being humiliated. And so, of course, it's affecting a large area of your life already. And that's my actions. And that's it? your actions. So it's so, affecting my actions. So it's affecting sure. your actions and your decisions and your choices that you're making right at the moment, right at the time. Yep. But larger than that, it has an effect inside of the soul when it comes to desire. Uh -huh. So while I'm, while I'm suppressing fear in my soul, I am also suppressing every other thing inside of my soul. And the extent to which I express, suppress the fear will be the extent that I'll suppress other parts of my soul. So if I suppress a, a feeling that I will eventually be humiliated and I don't allow that feeling to be experienced, I am also suppressing all of my desires. Mm. So this includes all of my sexual desires, all of my desires for, you know, in terms of my day-to-day -day life, in terms of love-based relationships, it includes all of my desires with my children, my desires for my future, and all of these other areas. My creativity. Your creativity like and all these other areas are all suppressed yep. at the same time. Yep. You can't connect to them. You won't be able to connect to them. So, so we're having a much larger effect than it just affecting our actions about the particular thing that we think the fear is related to. Mm -hmm. the, rea the reality is that when we suppress it, our soul... We're suppressing whole areas of our soul now, areas that are completely unrelated even to the original point of suppression. Mm -hmm. And this is where I feel most people don't have any understanding at all of to why they feel disconnected from their lives. They're disconnected from their lives because they are suppressing certain aspects of the life that causes the soul to suppress all parts of those things associated with those, with those aspects, as well as suppressing any other emotion that may be just as overwhelming, even if it's in a positive or a negative direction. So, so it has a powerful effect on the soul in lots of different ways and, and ways in which most people on the planet have no appreciation of yep, in terms of their day-to-day -day life. And most people do complain that they're not, you know, many people on the planet now are complaining that they don't feel connected with themselves. They don't feel connected with their life. They don't feel joy in their day-to-day -day life much at all. And this is because of the level of suppression they have of the what they view as the painful emotions. And this, this suppression of painful emotion causes a suppression of the experience of pleasurable emotions. Mm. And in the end, you end up with a suppressed person unable to experience pain or pleasure mm. and doing even extreme things in order to feel as a result. So, it, and so from what you're saying, I have a picture of um, this kind of dampened down soul. As soon as uh, within our soul, we know or I feel that there's all these emotions and passions and desires and all these things. Mm -hmm. Some of them are happy, loving. But, but some for of them, them to be experienced, they have to be. They have to come out of the soul. Yes. They can't remain within the soul. They have to be experienced by being by by going through an experience of of the release of these emotions. So these emotions will come out of the soul. That's our natural state. Our natural state is to have desires, but not only have them, but also to act upon them. Uh -huh. That's our natural state. We act upon all of our desires. Have our desires, have our emotions. And, and they, act upon them. And experience, experience them. Experience them. Yep. And, and, and we see the experience of them. Mm -hmm. We feel the experience of them. That's how the energy of these emotions are, is released. 
Right. Mm. So if we didn't have any suppression, our soul would be experiencing desire and emotion in a really expansive way. Is in a that constant right? state of experience. Yep. So there'd be emotions and desires and passions all being experienced. There'd be a lot of joy because we're not suppressing anything. Any times we're, we're acting out of harmony with love by the experience of these desires, there'd also be a lot of pain. And, and this is what, pro what the problem is. What the problem is, is we're in this state naturally where we, we, we will naturally experience desires, passions and longings and all these other things. And it will all fly out of our soul as a never-ending stream of energy, mm -hmm. if you like. And, and what we do is because we've acted out of harmony with God's laws of love, some of these things that come out of the soul are painful in their experience. Mm -hmm. And so what we then do, instead of correcting the action that's out of harmony with the law, we decide to suppress the result by suppressing the painful experience. Now, the painful experience is the result of our action out of harmony with the law. It is not the cause of our pain. The pain is the result or the effect of my actions that have out of harmony with love. So when I choose to suppress the pain, mm -hmm. I am not addressing the cause mm -hmm. of the pain. Mm -hmm. And also, due to the way the soul has been made, I will suppress even the pleasure and the good things that my soul has also created. So this, yes, wow. <laughs> it's you pretty know, big I mean, when you think about it that statement, way. It's a statement, yes. Because, it, because basically what we're saying is that it, it, if we look at the truth about God's laws, we know the truth about God's laws are such that whenever I break them or whenever I act out of harmony with them, I will have pain and suffering as the result. So the real cause of any pain that's within my soul is, is the action taken out of harmony with love. That's the real cause. Now, most of the time we don't honour that as the real cause, right? And the majority of people on the planet don't honour that as the real cause of their pain and suffering. Mm -hmm. So what they do is they feel the pain and suffering that is the result of acting out of harmony with the true cause. But instead, instead of attempting to correct the cause, they suppress the result. Yes. But what I'm saying with this principle of suppression is that if you choose to suppress the pain and suffering, which is the result of a cause of breaking the law, if you choose to suppress it, you suppress not only it, the very thing that causes that, that is the pain and suffering, but you suppress also the experience of any pleasure. And this is a compensatory effect that's placed upon the soul but as a part of the nature of how God's created it to show you that something is wrong with, the, with, with choosing suppression. Mm -hmm. right? So what God's trying to do in, with the... And this is a law that governs the soul. What try, God's trying to do with this particular law that governs the soul, a principle that governs the soul, is he's trying to expose to us the results of our own suppression. Yeah. Yeah. Of pain. Mm. So, so, so if we look at it more fully, the breaking of the law creates the pain. Yes. The suppression of the pain causes the suppression also of pleasure, which, which results in more pain. Mm -hmm. So what God's trying to attempt to show us is if you try to solve the effect rather than getting at the cause, you're going to create more pain and suffering for your soul. Mm. And that's really what God's trying to do through this principle of suppression, suppression, to show us that when we choose suppression, we're actually causing a further degradation of our own experience. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we're going to cause more pain to our own experience. Yeah. Mm.